DBT. Uh, it's a term coined by Marsha Linehan for dialectic behavioral therapy. Many of us would be aware of behavioral therapies. That means how to change behavior. Understanding cognition means our thoughts, how to change our thoughts, because if my thoughts are negative, my behavior would be negative as well. Uh, so if I'm feeling very irritable and agitated and feeling that I don't matter, that I've been abandoned and I don't, nobody cares, then my behavior is going to be manifested in a similar manner. Uh, if I'm traumatized, I will have the trauma out of my mind and thus that will keep me awake at night and will keep me behaving in a manner which is not prudent, like drinking alcohol or, or shopping or gambling and so forth. So we understand the cognition, which is the thinking of the brain, and then it makes it easier to understand why we behave the way we behave. Um, so if somebody has a thought of feeling hungry, it means they are going to look for food. If I'm feeling thirsty, I will look for water. Now, if you and I know that many a time you're not hungry and still we are eating, now that is called mindless eating. Uh, that means we may be feeding our emotional states. Uh, I have done that many, many times myself, and I'm eating something, and I don't even have a reason to eat anymore. So we use the term mindfulness. That means becoming aware of why our thoughts are the way they are. And that is the added component to DBT, which says you learn your mental health by understanding your inner emotional psychology and emotional intelligence and by understanding where, where how many thoughts we have and are some of those thoughts redundant and not necessary and some of those thoughts maybe are important and helpful it's almost like cleaning my 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 clothing cupboard sometimes i have 20 pants hanging and i only need two of them so sometimes we have about one million thoughts in our brain, and we only need 20 of them. <laughs> so mindfulness allows us to understand how our brain can be cluttered by unnecessary clutter and thoughts and how to clean it up. So we call it DBT. It's a fancy term for understanding our own brain and understanding our thought patterns and understanding which one are helpful and which one we need to just redo and, and then upgrade to a new software of the brain. Yeah, and. CBT and mindfulness is a little bit different because when we think of like cognitive behavioral therapy or psychotherapy, we might think of, you know, delving way back in the past and, you know, correlating something that happened a long time ago with, with something that's happening now. Or it might look at one specific behavior that needs to change. But in developing mindfulness, it gives you the full spectrum picture. It gives you the past and how that's affecting you now. And it also gives you that insight into how your brain is working currently so that you can make changes. And a lot of our classes are DBT skill format. So it's not only recognizing where you're at currently, but things that you can do to make subtle improvements to that with real skills. So that when you feel completely helpless, you aren't left with just this pill that you, know, you take and hope to God that it works. You can say, I know that I have something that I myself can do, and that's what empowerment is. Absolutely, absolutely. So that was one of my own realization as a psychiatrist. Uh, we used to tell people, go get a job, go get a life, go get better. And, and yes, of course, everybody wants to get better, uh, and they want to have a life, but many a times it's not as easy as it seems, and we would call them non-compliant with treatment, or they don't want to get better, or they're stuck. However, on the contrary, it's almost like asking somebody to go out and read a manual for how to fly a plane and saying, now that you've read the manual, go ahead, fly a plane. You should know it all. Uh, flying a plane or driving a car not only requires how to read a book, but also step-by-step -step instructions of how to do it just right. And in psychiatry, we often have missed that thing in our clinical practices. So our our, our our skills groups are actually practicing sessions 
where we actually tell people and teach people how to dance life rather than feeling miserable in life. And, 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 and we have a lot more engagement because people want to get better, sometimes they don't know how to get better. And, and thus, we teach them exactly what to do and how to do that, if that's their choice. And just to even bring that back in from what makes us individual, I think that this practice is cool because you are involved in a lot of the groups as well as myself, so it's not just us saying, you need to go to this group, it's we're involved in the whole patient's care. We really do get to know them. Absolutely. I want to kind of add, um, we, we must live that life ourselves or else we cannot help another person to get better. Uh, so we do as clinicians, all of our clinicians do mindfulness practices. We try to eat healthy, we sleep on time, and we understand the life forces at play, the financial health issues, the issues pertaining to relationship issues, and the fears which are at this time dominating the earth, you know, the wars and the and, and challenges, you know, shooting and whatnot, that we, in the middle of all that chaos, we have to stay very mindful and grounded so that we can address those and live not in fears but in wisdom. And, and, the, and the practice really is the exact opposite of fear which dominates the earth at this time and, and, and drives people's behaviors. We like to drive behaviors by, by mindfulness uh, practices.